Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I'll show you how to build a working battery with a potato. Let's go over the supplies you will need to do this project. First, you will need at least three potatoes, although you can also substitute other fruits and vegetables. Actually, comparing different fruits and vegetables is a great topic for a science project. You will also need the other supplies pictured here, which are all available in a kit that you can find linked in the description below this video. That kit includes copper and zinc electrodes that you will need to make the battery, LEDs and a buzzer that you can power with the battery, alligator clips that make it easier to make the connections, and a multimeter to measure your battery's output. So to get started, we are going to build a single cell battery with one potato, one copper electrode, and one zinc electrode. The copper electrode is going to be the cathode or positive side of our battery, and the zinc electrode is going to be the anode or negative side of our battery. The potato itself is going to act as the electrolyte, which allows charge to flow between the electrodes. If you are not sure what all those terms mean, or you would like to learn more about the chemical reaction that happens in the battery, check out the link to the written instructions in the description below this video. So to make the battery, simply take your electrodes and punch them into the potato, a few centimeters apart from each other. You might wonder, does it matter exactly how far apart they are or exactly how deep I punch them into the potato? And I'm not going to give that away in this video because that is yet another great topic for a science project. Once you have done that, we are going to use our multimeter to measure the voltage output of the battery. Do that by setting the multimeter dial to the 20 volt setting over here on the left. Turn the multimeter on. Make sure that the black probe is plugged into the COM port down here, and the red probe is plugged into the V Omega MA port. That's the one for measuring voltage. And then take your probes and touch the red or positive probe to the copper, which again is the positive side of our battery, and the black or negative probe to the zinc electrode, and you will see the voltage reading on your battery screen. In this case, I'm getting about 0.9 volts. Now, it's not a huge deal if you get those reversed, you're not going to break anything, but you will see a negative sign on your voltage reading since you have positive and negative backwards. This is where the alligator clips come in very handy because it can be nice to have your hands free when working with the multimeter. So you can connect these. Again, we usually use red for positive. You wanna keep your color coding consistent and use them to connect an electrode to the probe from the multimeter and then that's gonna leave your hands free to do other things. So I'm gonna use the green one here to connect to the black probe. It's okay if your kit doesn't come with a black alligator clip, it's just make sure you use red for positive and then remember that you're using green or black for negative. And again, now I have my hands free to work with other things and change settings on the multimeter, set up my next potato, etc. Speaking of changing settings on your multimeter, you may also want to use your multimeter to measure the current produced by your potato battery. And you can do that by changing over here to the amp setting. Now, you might want to be careful because you see what I just did. I didn't have my alligator clip on there firmly enough. That fell off, and I suddenly started reading zero. So if you are all of a sudden getting a zero on your multimeter, double check all of your connections and make sure one of your alligator clips did not come loose. Anyway, you may want to measure current using your multimeter, which you can do over here with the amp settings. And you have to be careful with these settings because you need to get them in the right range. If you select a range that is too low, for example, right now I am in the 200 microamp range, your screen will just read a one like this. If you go up a notch, for example, now I'm in the 2000 microamp range, I see that my potato is producing a little less than 500 microamps of current. If I keep going up to a range that is too high, I'm going to lose some accuracy and I'm only going to get about one decimal place on the reading here. So you want to play with the range until you get a reading that is appropriate based on the range you have selected. Now that is a real crash course in using a multimeter. If you would like to learn more about using a multimeter, again we have a link to a much more extensive multimeter tutorial in the description below this video. So just taking readings with the multimeter isn't that exciting. We want to see if our battery can power something like the LED. So to do that, we're going to disconnect the multimeter, but leave the alligator clips attached to the electrodes. And here is where we need to pay close attention to the polarity, or which side is positive and which side is negative, of both our battery and our LED. So to remember that for the battery, the copper is the positive side and the zinc is the negative side. And if you look very closely at the LED, you will notice that one of the legs is slightly longer than the other. So the longer leg of the LED is the positive side, 
Current only flows through LEDs in one direction. They act sort of like a one-way valve for electrical current. So if you hook an LED up backwards, it's not gonna work at all. So I need to make sure I hook the longer leg of my LED up to the positive side of the battery and the negative leg of the LED up to the negative side of the battery. And when you do that, ideally, if it was working, you would expect your LED to light up. But we notice that my LED does not appear to be lighting up at all. So what we are going to explore next is connecting multiple cells in series to make a battery with a higher voltage and see if that will light up our LED. So connecting batteries in series means connecting them end to end or positive to negative, forming a chain. So I have a second potato here, again, with zinc and copper electrodes, and I'm going to connect the copper or positive electrode of this one to the zinc or negative electrode of this one. And I am then going to make my external connections to the two outer electrodes. So again, I'm going to connect a green alligator clip to my zinc electrode over here and a red alligator clip to my copper electrode over here and get my multimeter back and take a voltage reading. And I should now see a higher voltage because voltages add in series. So when I connect two potato batteries in series, I expect the voltage to be about double of what I got with a single potato battery. And I see that's true. I am now getting a little less than two volts instead of a little less than one volt. So I'm going to disconnect my multimeter and now see if that is enough to light up my LED. Again, being careful to remember which side is the longer leg and connect that to the positive side of the battery. Connect the other end to the negative side. And it's kind of faint. You can't see it very well from the side, but if you look at the LED from the top, I can see that the LED is now lighting up. I do have enough voltage to light the LED. You can try the same thing with the buzzer, which has two wires, again, red for positive and black for negative. So I'm going to connect the red wire to the positive side of the battery, black wire to the negative side of the battery. And if this works, I should hear an audible buzzing. So that is a quick overview of how to build a working potato battery with multiple cells to power a tiny device like an LED. You might be wondering, based on other videos you've seen online, if you can power something much larger like a cell phone or a full-size light bulb. We're not going to address that in this video, but we have a different video about that linked in the description below this one. There are also many different things you can test and change if you want to do this for a science project, including connecting more batteries in series, and also connecting the batteries in parallel, which is explained in the written directions, which again are linked below this video. In terms of things to look out for, remember that you need to look out for loose connections and keeping your positives and negatives straight. If all of a sudden you are seeing a zero on your multimeter, make sure you do not have an alligator clip loose somewhere. Your potatoes may also dry out after an extended period of use, in which case your readings will start to drop. And remember to keep track of your positives and negatives, especially for the LED and the buzzer, as they do have a positive and negative side. So if you connect them backwards, they're never going to work no matter how many potatoes you have. Again, for complete written instructions for this project, including a link to purchase the kit with all the supplies, see the description below this video. And for thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.